Hear ye, hear ye. Can anybody hear me? Top 10 Zodiac Signs to Make Out With by Mark freaking Dinkenberg. Number 10. Can I borrow a pen so I can write down the name of this fish? Ya bish. Pisces is dreamy and their kisses are steamy. Soft and surreal, they'll make your heart feel. Number 9. The stars align. Aquarius is quirky and their kisses are jerky. Unique and surprising, their lips are mesmerizing. Each kiss feels like you're flying. Number eight, let's stay up late. Aries brings heat with a kiss that's elite. Full of passion and speed, they know how to lead. They'll take your breath with thrilling speed. Number seven, a bacon named Kevin. This footloose star has gone too far. Let's say we dip him in oil and serve him to a horde of angry fans. Oh, fuck, I think this is the wrong list. I think this is the wrong video. Oh, fuck. This is Mars Day with Mark. Number 69. Forget the list. We can finish that later. This is your weekly astrology podcast, Fire Family. Welcome back to the Inner Temple. It is your host with the most, Mr. Meyer with the fire. And today, I'm going to tell you about the stars. We're about to go hard. Today's a good day. Every day is a good day. And I just posted like 13 videos. Well, this will be number 13, like 12 videos in a row. And if you don't live under a rock, you've probably been hearing about the solar eclipse. And if you live under a rock, I'm going to tell you about the solar eclipse. All right, gang, this is your astrology podcast for the week. We're going to cover the week of October 8th to October 1st. Are we going in reverse? That doesn't even make any sense. October 1st to October 8th. What the fuck? I think I'm cooked, y'all, if I'm just being honest. So uh, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back to the inner temple. I'm going to start with the degrees of the Ds. We're going to fast forward a week in advance, and then we're going to dance. And <laughs> I'm pretty excited, man. It's a good time to be alive. And uh, the universe is chopped right now, man. And I'm about to tell you why. All right, sorry, I spaced out, y'all. So today, the sun is in Libra. Shout out to my Libras. If you are a bruh, leave it in the comments so we can celebrate you. Shout out my bestie. You know who you are. With the Cancer Moon. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man. So the sun starts at 9 Libra, and the moon is at 2 Libra. And tomorrow is going to be that solar eclipse. So we're going to spend extra time talking about it and seeing what is given and maybe even pull some cards because I'm telling you guys, I just did 12 readings for one, one for each zodiac sign. So they should be linked in the description and you can just pick yours, go for the sun, go for the moon, go for the rising. If you have any prominent placements, you better check out that video as well. But I also want to do one just for the collective and kind of see what the fuck is going on. But uh, with the moon, where we start, it's just about to hit the sun. You feel me? So we're in this waning moon phase. The moon is about to hit new, and then it'll start waxing and getting bigger. It's the dark moon. But also, this is a crazy time because the moon is going to eclipse the sun. And if you happen to be in, like, the southern hemisphere, South America, like, the bottom of South America or the Pacific Ocean, you would have this total solar eclipse. And it would be hard to see shit because it'd be dark during the daytime for a few minutes or so. But for the rest of us, we're probably going to get like no eclipse or a partial eclipse. But either way, this is a supercharged new moon and it's going to take up a highlight of the focus, a big part of the video. But apart from that, gang, nothing's happening, bro. Everything is sitting still, like being this ornery and weird. Mercury's at 10 Libra. Venus is at 10 Scorpio. Let me move the bubble around. Mercury, Venus, Mars is at 15 Cancer. We've got Jupiter at 21 Gemini. We've got Saturn at 14 Taurus. We've got Uranus at 26. Oh, I'm tripping. Did I say Taurus? Saturn's at 14 Pisces going retrograde. See, I'm really cooked, y'all. Mm, this is not Neptune. This is Uranus at 26 Taurus. 28 degrees. That's where Pisces... Neptune is. I'm going to say somebody should just fire Mark, bro. He's like really, uh, episode 69 is off to an 
uh, a weird start. <laughs> this shit is unhinged, man. So we got Pluto retrograde at the 29th degree of Capricorn. The North Node is at six Aries, and that puts the South one at six Libra. You see that? And then we got 21 degree Aries Chiron retrograde. Motherfuckers be retrograde across the celestial stage. Let's go one week in advance. Snance. And you got October 8th. Like I was saying, guys, nothing is happening. Like Pluto is still at 29 retrograde in Capricorn. You've got Neptune still at 28, still retrograde. Uranus is still at 26. Saturn moves back like a few minutes. We finally hit 13 degrees. Jupiter is still at 21, but also it's stationing retrograde. So it's like Jupiter is barely moving. It's literally about, it's like sitting still all week and it's going to like start turning backwards. Jupiter is about to be like, let me show you my moves. I can moonwalk too. You see, you got, you got Pluto, like Michael walking, Jackson dancing, moonwalking, whatever the fuck you call it. And then Neptune started doing the moonwalk. And then Uranus started doing the moonwalk and everybody's hitting the thriller dance. And then fucking Saturn did it. And then Jupiter's like, hold up, watch this, you bitch. And uh, Mars is dancing forward, though, about a few degrees, 18 degrees. You know, Venus moved up like nine degrees. Mercury moved up like 12. And the sun moved like seven. And the sun does that shit every time. And, you know, the moon moves a little bit, too. So we'll spend some time talking about the moon, gang. Before I do that, let's talk about the planets and the solar system and kind of the season and what the fuck is going on. Give you a reason to smile today. So, okay. The sun is in fucking Libra. Not just Libra. Fucking Libra. Shit. I'm feeling like a spaz today, man. I fuck my nose. You can't even know when I mute, mute the goddamn microphone. Face. So, uh, no clue what he's saying. Basically, the sun is why we're alive. If you didn't have a sun, you'd die. Oh, shit. So thank God we have the sun. Thank God every day the sun shines its rays and gives us happy baby face. What if we lived in the Teletubbies and like you go outside and the happy baby is like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Bro, that should be crazy. <laughs> In any magnitude, the sun is the life that we're living, right? And whatever zodiac sign it's trans transiting in front of, uh, you know, that's the energy we're getting. And it's an optical illusion. We're really going around the sun. We're transiting around it. And it's like, you know, the sun is the solar system. So happy babies, having a good ass time. Libra's a fun time to unwind. This is the sign of beauty and balance and relationships. So I hope you guys are having a great time feeling more social. I did post a full breakdown for all of Libra season already. So it's going to be linked in the description as well. If you want to check it out, do. This is a darker Libra season because the ruler of Libra is Venus and she's in the sunken place, Scorpio. So I will just say that, uh, you know, things are beautiful, but things are kind of intense. Things are kind of sexy. Things are mysterious and uh, secretive. Ooh. And, <laughs> you know. Venus in Scorpio is intense love. It's deep love. It's loving through the soul. But also sometimes this feels like I'm not fucking with anybody. I'd rather be solo dolo and by my motherfucking self. So this Libra season, it's social, but also it's like intensely social or it's antisocial. What the fuck? So uh, are y'all feeling that chat? Let me know in the comments. Am I, am, am I making sense? What the hell is going on? Because uh, I need your your perspective. You know what's crazy about relationships, speaking of Libra, is it's only through our interaction with others and the world that we get to understand who the fuck we are. You know what I mean? Do you? Let me know. And the moon is mooning and gooning and edging and jelking and mogging and frogging and simping and wimping and alpha Chad, giga Chad, simping over nobody, man. Uh, what the fuck is Mark talking about? What is he on? Bro, I'm like tweaking today, fam. That's what happens when you make like 10 lists and 12 videos. You guys want to hear the rest of the list? You let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. But, uh, you know, we got to commit to the bit. It's Mars Day with Mark 69. I only got like an hour left to do this shit. All right, gang. So uh, Mercury and Libra is giving us some beautiful perspective. 
Hopefully you're seeing the beauty that life has to offer. Hopefully you're choosing peace, appreciating life. Oh, yes, that's right. I'm going to bring this back to the beginning of the week and then we can kind of like get a good lens on it. Here's the thing, though, guys. Mars is in fucking cancer. And it's like, why is everybody so goddamn frustrated or emotional or tired or exhausted? You know, Mars and cancer is this want to be comfortable. And I think that's cool. But at the same time, you know, this could be like extreme laziness. So uh, Mars and can and I got a video linked in the description about Mars and cancer, too. And wherever this shows up in your chart, you'll see where the power is and where things need to be adjusted and whatnot. But this is like, fuck your feelings. Astrology is a language. Mars is how we frick. And uh, cancer is our feelings. So, you know, frick your feelings. Heck them. I'm sorry. I just said a, a cuss word. I said heck. Damn, dude. But, uh, you know, open the heart. This is about getting close to people. And, you know, Mars is ruling over Venus right now, too. So I kind of just feel like this is a freaky ass time. And uh, one thing that's also kind of cool, I'm going to draw your attention to it and not really like draw this video out too long because I do be yapping, though. You got Venus trying Mars like all week. And it's a freaky ass week, man. Let me tell you, get your freak on. No ditty. This is about having a good ass time with your uh, with your with yourself, you know, getting jiggy with it. You know what I mean? Uh, rubbing the motherfucking stones together, making a fire or sticks together. Or some shit like that, you know? Making babies. Copulating. Hey, girl, you want to recopulate the earth? Didn't think so. Okay, cool. On to the next one. So uh, Jupiter is in Gemini. And Jupiter in Gemini is a mind fuck, dude. It's like, whoa, 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 like wind tunnel full of ideas. And it's just crazy because uh, this shit doesn't stop for nobody, man. Like, life happens so much. It's just crazy how things happen, right? That's insane. This is how we learn Jupiter. It gives us, like, a perspective of life. It's our inductive right brain. And uh, mm, Gemini is, like, the left brain. So it's like a train wreck within the collective consciousness. But also it's, like, a desire to learn, to get involved, to have better perspective. Motherfuckers just be yapping their dick off saying some dumb shit or you know maybe getting wise i don't know are we reading books are we cooked chat let me know and we got saturn and pisces and saturn and pisces is a cold world but at the same time if you can find that peace within yourself it's a beautiful world ultimately it's a beauty like life is what you make it gang that's the thing you need to know about pisces is that your imagination holds weight you feel me Saturn and Pisces. Imagination is Pisces. Saturn holds weight. Your imagination holds weight. And that's great. So, you know, lay off the brain rot and try to visualize some shit that you want to experience. Unless you want to be a meme, then, you know, brain rot all day. It's all good. You know, it's your life. Don't let me tell you how to live your life, dude. Just uh, live it like an alpha Chad, if you don't mind. Unless you're a beta sigma um, what is the word? What is the word? What is the word? Oh, fuck. Beta simp. There it was. Yeah, the word. That's a simp. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, spirit. I had to like literally channel that shit from the ether. Yeah, a beta simp. You can be an alpha Chad or a beta simp. And, uh, you know, you get to pick one. There's no in between. Just so you know, no gray areas whatsoever. So uh, I already told you guys, but nothing is happening this week. Oh, yeah. One thing about the Libra sun. And I'm going to actually like use this as a, a time to uh, segue into the main juice, the main fucking stew, the pizza, whatever entree we're going to eat. It doesn't fucking matter. What are we snacking on today, Chad? Let me know. But we got a uh, <clears throat> I'm hungry. <laughs> we got the, the eclipse in Libra. Okay. In the eclipse in Libra, uh, it, it's it's a new moon. It's a new cycle this week, gang. So, like, if I could be for real for one second, I probably couldn't. But at the same time, uh, make a plan and take some action. Set some goals because you need targets. You need objectives. You need things to do, my friend. Oh, yes. 
So that's what the new moon is about. And it's really important that you have some idea, some vision. And I think it's kind of fucking hard because at this point, you know, you've got a, a new moon in the sign of Libra. And if you know anything about Libras, they don't know a goddamn thing about what they want. Respectfully. I'm a Libra moon, by the way. It's like, this is indecisive as hell. It's like, do I want to wear the white shoes or do I want to wear the black shoes? Or should I wear my Converse or should I wear my Vans or should I wear my Chucks or should I wear my Toms or should I wear my fucking Uggs? Or uh, should I go barefoot or wear my Tonkles or what the fuck? It doesn't even matter. It literally doesn't matter, bro. We've been standing at the door for three fucking hours. Can you just put some goddamn shoes on? I'm fucking tired. I don't even want to go anymore, to be honest. Ugh. Okay, so uh, make up your mind, dude. That's what this shit is about. Pick something, dude. Just pick something. Any fucking thing. It's not that goddamn serious. Just we've been waiting for you to make a goddamn decision for like 10 years. So shit. And I'm serious, man. Like Libra, season, eclipse. We've also got this eclipse square to Mars. And that's another important thing to know about this season. And I'm not even like just trying to make jokes but like the mars square the sun and square the moon also kind of makes it like fuck y'all i just want to be free fuck you i don't even want to pick nobody's gonna tell me shit roo, 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 roo. like mars and the sun is aggressive as hell it's like and we're gonna have the mars sun square all fucking week guys so i will and probably next week too actually i know next week as well and uh you know, on one note, this provides a challenge or a need for a challenge, but also it's like, fuck y'all, I'm going to do myself and be me. And this also might increase aggression this week and make us more pissed off at everything in the world. So it's just important to find avenues to get your aggression channeled in some way. And it's like, I'll be beating on my chest after I do these pushups, bro. I'm getting fucking swole. I don't know if you guys have been seeing me over like the whole fucking, uh, 69 weeks of Mars Day with Mark, but I've been ugh, getting jacked. I'm fucking excited. I feel good. And that's keeping me alive. That's keeping me fulfilled. That's keeping me happy. I've been eating my macros. 600 grams of drywall, 1 million grams of protein. Let's go. I've been getting it in, man. I've been fucking eating. Big dogs got to eat. You feel me? And uh, straight dickheads, bro. Mars square the sun. I just be minding my business, bro. But motherfuckers be pressing me, trying me, trying to get in my comments, my DM. And I, if you're commenting nice stuff, I'm not talking about you. If you're keyboard warrior hating on me, sending me dumb shit, having to get flamed in my inbox and blocked, fuck you. Fuck you. Come spar with me, bitch. I got no respect for you. And put your fucking dukes up. Because I'm feeling it. I'm on my Mars return, y'all. I was born with 15 Cancer Mars. So, like, let me chill. What the fuck got into him? Sometimes I think, what would I be like if I started taking steroids? I don't think I ever will. Because uh, I see people really raging the fuck out that take steroids. And I'm just like, I'm aggressive enough, dude. I could not even imagine if I was roided out. I would be the, like, bro, I would destroy the earth. <laughs> if I if I was on the, in the on the roids, bro, I got asteroids in my chart. I'm good on that. That's fucked up. But uh, let me also say, the thing about this new moon, and check out the video for your sign. It's going to be linked below. The moon square Mars is also internally frustrating. Or this might make us internalize our aggression or just get really angry at the world. So it's just important not to take that shit out on yourself. You know, if you need to change, make the change. But see if you could do it with love. And also, if you resist the change and you don't know how to put your energy into something constructive, this sucks, but I'm going to be clear. Moon square Mars is like the time when people start taking their frustration out on the close ones in their life, you know, and their friends and their family and their lovers. So it's like, nah, bro. Demand more from yourself and demand less from other people for real. If I could be serious for a second. Okay, and open your motherfucking heart. And also another thing with this moon Mars square is like you have to see frustration as opportunity. You have to realize that the interruptions in your plan, the disturbances that come along your path, these are opportunities to grow and methods to get to know yourself unconsciously to see what really fucking bothers you. And also, if you have the right attitude, 
These disturbances can be the enjoyable part of your life, but that's your choice. Nobody else's. So beyond that, you know, this Libra eclipse, it's Libra. So Venus Scorpio, and it just kind of saying that, uh, you know, the love is deep, y'all. So you better climb your tree and find that love within inside of yourself. And Jupiter is going retrograde at the end of the week. So I will just say that this gives us an opportunity to understand our philosophies and stop like hoping for shit just to fall on our lap. It's good to be faithful and optimistic. But at the end of the day, this is about not being delusional. Jupiter retrograde, checking our beliefs, checking our, you know, checking our hopes. You ever heard that phrase, wish in one hand, shit in the other one? That's disgusting, honestly, but like, that is so gross. But uh, which one fills up first? It depends on what you got in Pisces, quite honestly. But uh, some people got a handful of dookie. And uh, let's not do that, man. Wash your hands. Just let me put the Florida water in my hands. That's crazy, man. But uh, so, uh. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm going to pull some cards because one thing I also want to say about this uh, eclipse, you know, that I didn't say in the breakdowns that are posted below is leap. Well, I did say this a little bit, but I'm going to kind of reiterate on this part of it because this is what I'm being shown through the divination already. And I'm kind of going to do the same reading that I was doing last time, but for the collective and the archetype is Saturn Libra energy. And this is fucking justice, justice, like a. Hey, God is about to put the smack down on these idiots, on these fuckers, on these bitches. I feel like I'm a three year, no, like a five, like, or like a 10 year old that learned how to swear. I like grew up so fast, three, five, 10. I don't know many three year olds that swear, but I'm like one of those kids who just learned how to cuss and he just like letting it rip. It's fucking crazy. So justice is kind of what it seems like to be within this cycle. Um, a couple other things I want to show you guys and highlight is that Neptune is sextile Pluto. It's been this way for a second. What does that mean? Neptune sextile Pluto says you really are a co-creator in this life. So be deliberate, be intentional. That's also the theme of Mars square the sun. Be intentional. Focus on what you want and focus on your focus. There's higher powers. There's things out of your control. That's Pluto energy. But the powers in your imagination, Neptune. Like you can build your dreams if you take inspired action, if you actually take time to visualize or think. But here's the sad truth, guys. A lot of people literally don't fucking think unless they're absolutely forced to. And they live stupid, sad lives, man. And I'm not trying to be a dick right now, but that's really what it is. It's like people complain about the shit that they can change because they're not thinking. They're not thinking. They're letting life act on them. They're reacting to life. They're not being proactive with their lives. You see what I'm saying? Just waiting for shit to happen to them when they should be doing shit to life. So that's Neptune up in the mix. Also, Pluto is trying Uranus. And this is actually way cooler, in my opinion. And this is about drastically changing your life, man. Taking things into your own hand. And I was also getting the message therapy, 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 therapy. I'm looking for a therapist right now. I'm in that process. Let this be your sign to go get help. Heal yourself. Talk to somebody about your problems. Dive deep. Go find a trained professional that can help you explore your psyche. Understand what's going on within you. You know, and this also talks about magical practices, you know, integration within your ego, diving beyond, going deep, exploring the occult, exploring the hidden, traveling as a soul, evolving your soul, transforming your essence, finding the power within yourself. There's a lot to say about Uranus trying Neptune, or uh, I'm sorry, Uranus trying Pluto. Neptune is definitely not trying Uranus. It is sextile though. It is sextile, though, and that's kind of crazy. You look at the midpoint, Neptune's sitting right in the middle and just saying, hey, gang, if you are in your power and you're being yourself, it's likely that your dreams are going to come true. That's really what that midpoint says, what it suggests. All right, let's pull the cards. I think, like, I put, I did put a card back that kind of flew on the ground, but 
regardless, we're going to restart it. So we got the strength card in reverse. And this is like our first house energy. This is like the identity, how we're feeling. Are we feeling tired, Chad? Are we cooked? Strength in reverse. We feeling weak, perhaps. Or maybe this could say we're really putting in that work. We're like, we're putting in all our strength. Getting strong as hell. Maybe not knowing ourselves on some level, needing to get deeper into our self. That's Leo energy in reverse. This Aquarius thing is about to come up. Second house is our needs. We got chariot. And this to me, and it's all in reverse. And this to me is like, you know, the moon coming up, having to go deep inside of ourselves, having to feel our feelings and correct them. Or like stop hiding from them, really. You know, feel them. There might be some emotional healing. And this is kind of confirmation, six of cups in reverse. Thinking about the past. That's the third house, the mentality. What's up with the fourth house, though? And by the way, I want to say this for uh, everybody out here, because like this is the chart of um, my local chart. You really do want to watch those videos or or your video that shows your zodiac sign, because uh, it'll go through your respective houses. This is like a local Capricorn chart. You probably you may you may have Capricorn rising, but chances are you don't. You know what I mean? Not everybody does. This is a trip. Uh, the fourth fourth card is your uh, not Uranus, but uh, seeing the Hierophant in reverse. Why is everything in reverse? You know the first hemisphere, like the first six houses. That's the inner part of the self. All these reverse cards is like, are we going through it? So what do we do? The fifth house, Queen of Swords energy. Keep your mind right. Have a strong mentality. Speak love into yourself. Be a strategist. Set the goals. Take the action like we were talking about. Don't leave things up to chance. All right, and I got justice in reverse. This is the sixth house, guys. So this is like the day-to-day, -day, the routine, the life we're living, the work we're doing. A lot of us are facing injustice. And it looks like karmic retribution is coming for real. That was what I was saying right before I started pulling cards. Karmic retribution. And there's a need for it. A literal need for it. I'm not going to get political about it, but I heard that uh, Iran started launching missiles to Israel. Let me know if that's true. I should really do my own research. I saw a couple like links posted in this discord. I didn't look at the articles. I'm not even from there, you know, so I couldn't tell you like, bro, it's crazy when you uh, live where you live or whatever. It's like. I don't have any friends or fam in Florida. But I've been hearing about the hurricane and, you know, my heart goes out to everybody there. But it's like, how would I even know that that exists if I haven't been there or knew somebody that was there, even though I've seen the pictures? You know what I mean? I'm not trying to sound stupid, but I hope you guys see what I'm saying. It's like the moon landing, even like did that shit happen or were they just pictures? You know, so like the media is a crazy thing, but I kind of digress now, gang. What I'm seeing is that just justice needs to be had. You know, and uh, I think that's why I brought up the thing in Israel. Like, I don't know if the missile, if there are missiles being launched. I don't know if that is karmic retribution, but in any magnitude, we need peace in this world, bro. Straight up, we need peace in this world. Yeah, let me buy my tongue. Because I said I wasn't going to get political. I'm not afraid to, but I just don't want to take it there today. And talk about like the politics of it. World peace is the message, man. And also when it comes to uh, the seventh house, the relationship part of our life, big changes, guys. Death card. Death card. Transformation. Like Libra eclipse season could be breakup season for a lot of people. Or this could be just, you know, new people coming into our lives, relationships having to evolve even. Eighth house energy. Saturn is coming out in Pisces. That's what the Eight of Cups says. So the Eight of Cups says that we got to walk away from things that hold our power. It might be hard for that. Some things may hold our power and we're just like, can somebody help? Can I get some justice? What the fuck going on? So the ninth house. The moon. 
Yeah, give it time, man, because ninth house is like the universe, divinity, the higher powers. And this moon is going to do something, I'm telling you guys. That's very vague, but I'm telling you, like, when it comes to this eclipse, eclipses make, like, profound, unavoidable changes. And I'm really feeling in my heart of hearts that there is going to be some, like, gavels knocking, if you feel what I'm saying. Wheel of Fortune in reverse in the 10th house. The, the state of affairs in the world, man, I look that cool right now. So you got to have faith. You got to try to see the big picture in life. And recognize it's going to be okay. Have faith in the future. The future gets better. Truly. 11th house is judgment. In reverse. 11th house is the future. The wishes, the hopes, and the dreams. And I think that's pretty jazzed. Judgment in reverse says there's no telling what's going to happen, literally. You know, so be your best self. Exercise your better judgment. And also what I'm thinking, dude, is with this being, I think I said this before in the exact same video, uh, the, the associate house, the 11th house. Don't let everybody do your thinking for you. Do your own thinking. Do your own research for real when it comes to this life. Don't get too persuaded or taken over by the environment or the people within it. A mind that can't think from it for itself is actually useless. Okay. And when it comes to the 12th house, our dreams, our hopes, you know, what we're willing in three of three of wands, we're moving forward. So keep manifesting guys. Cause if you keep taking inspired action towards your dreams, it's only time in between you and your goals. I don't want to read that list for real. And find peace within your goals too, guys. I'm trying to say like, get comfortable with the idea of receiving what you actually want. Get comfortable with yourself. That's ultimately what the message is within this reading as well. Because I could go on and on for days and I'm like, I need an actual harp so I can keep harping. But please, for the love of God, watch that video. Because I like, it's like when your granny spends all night cooking Thanksgiving and you show up and you're like, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat. I ate before I got here. Why the fuck did you even come here? Watch those videos. So I stayed up all night making them. For multiple nights. No joke. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would. So I'd love it if you loved it. Or even if you liked it. Or even if you just tried it and smiled. Pretended to like it for me. But the message itself, and look at this Queen of Wands energy, love yourself, guys, because relationships are the theme in Libra. But at the end of the day, your relationship with you is the one that matters the most. So you have to like you. You have to be content with you because you're going to spend a lot of time with you. Queen of Wands energy, loving yourself unconditionally, exemplary will. And hey, man, the message here, I know I've been goofing as fuck, but the fool in reverse said, don't be a dumbass, man. I'm playing the fool in front of y'all sometimes, but hey, man, I'm smart as fuck, boy. And this also says that, you know, if nothing changes in your life, nothing's going to change. For things to change for you, you have to change. Same thing with that Mars square, man. I could take it right back there. And it's like, if, if it seems like I'm getting off topic, y'all, I'm literally trying to tell you because I, I covered this same content 12 times in a row. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> you know? So it's like, if you really want more depth, that's where it is. And hey, this is actually fucking amazing. We got the king and the queen of wands in this three card right here. The fool was in the middle. And this could look like soulmate union. You know, getting connected with our partners, making this shit make sense. Hold up. I'm doing this backwards. Hold up. <laughs> Trying to get it where it's not. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, that's how it was. No, it was like this like that yeah queen fool king of wands so uh reciprocity balance like a perfect match basically two people coming together with the same intentions therefore they know exactly what the fuck is up because they share a vision that's what this solar eclipse in libra is about is like your friends your lovers your uh associates everybody seeing each other eye to eye and this might be painful, guys. Like I was saying, changes need to be happen internally. And this might even reflect the, the external relationships. Some people are going to break up. 
but this is going to be uh, an evolution. This is going to be an ascension. This is all for the higher path, the highest good. And I also want to say with uh, with Venus and Libra, or I'm sorry, Venus ruling Libra and Scorpio, this cycle is going to be very auspicious for a lot of people's money. And people are going to get stupid rich, the people that deserve it. You know, and, and I honestly don't like to buy into the concept of worthiness because it's just a concept. But, uh, you know, some people feel entitled to shit and they don't actually do what's required to have it. You know what I mean? So like people that have been putting in the seeds, reaping the fucking fruit, you know, it, it's time to get paid, man. It's time to get rich. It's time to get powerful. It's time to really, you know, recognize where your options are. Use your fucking resources and plant your seeds and reap the fucking fruit. Not to wait for this shit to fall out of the sky, but to do something about it. Okay? That's what I mean when I say be intentional with your life, Fire Family. I don't got anything else to say besides, like, jokes and yapping my dick off. So I'm going to leave you with that. Let me know what you think about the other videos when you watch them, okay? Um, do we want to go through the moon throughout the rest of the week? We could do that really quick, you know, because this is the the eclipse and it kind of starts the whole week off and it'll be an, an empowering time on Wednesday to do some magic, to raise some energy, to have a good time. Let me cut off the, uh, the, the triangles and shit like that. And then we can go day by day. Day by day. Maybe we could go hour by hour. I could click this thing like a thousand times. So we, the, the earth is spinning every fucking day. Oh my God, it never stops spinning. Holy shit. So, uh, you know, Thursday morning, we wake up with that. You know, uh, this is funny as fuck, guys. Like, a lot of us are going to sleep through the moon Mars square, wake up pissed off on Thursday, and be like, what the fuck? Or wake up feeling really good because there's a moon trying Jupiter being like, yay, today's a good day. Yippee, I'm alive again. Hooray. Count my blessings. I didn't die in my sleep. I have two feet on my fucking legs and on my, on my, on my neck is a head. Oh man. And I got two arms on my torso. What the fuck? I am so blessed. And, uh, you know, moon trying Jupiter day. And then it's like, <laughs> and then like later on Thursday night, when the moon makes in conjunctions to uh, Uranus and fucking Neptune, then everybody has that thousand yard stare. They're like, oh, fuck. I exist. Do I exist with Neptune? And then the moon starts square in Pluto and somebody's like, I was just happy. Now I hate myself. Oh, fuck. I got to change my life drastically. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then like the moon sesquiquadrate Jupiter, you're like, oh, fuck. The music just stopped. And then the moon trying Saturn. I got to lock in. <laughs> But then the moon will crash onto Venus and be like, fuck yeah, I feel good again. I'm a bad bitch, though. And I can't be, but I look good. And then the moon trying Mars and it's like, fuck yeah, it's time to work. I'm about to have a good ass day. And then the moon on Sunday is going to be like opposite Uranus making a trine to Neptune. And this feels like electrically charged. I'm fucking grabbing the electric fence. And then like the fucking Neptune trying the moon going like, oh my God. I think I turned into a fish. I think I just went through a portal. I think I went into a different dimension. And uh, then we have this little semi-square with the moon to the sun. And that's like. Just crying for no fucking reason. Or feeling ourself. Feeling really good. Happy crying even. Whatever reason. Doesn't really matter. Let the tears flow. But like I'm saying, gang, then we have this like Mars cancer to deal with. So ultimately, it really doesn't matter what this is showing because you have to look at your chart and look at what your moon is doing and what your Mars are doing because that's really the highlight. And again, that's why I recommend you watch that Mars cancer video. Monday looks like a choppier day with the moon square to Saturn. This is a harder one, y'all. So remember, like watch this moon transit so you can see how it hits the other planets, but also your planets because, you know... There will be consequent aspects with your natal chart. And those are going to hit you more personally than the transiting aspects. But I'm saying collectively on Monday, we do have this uh, moon square Saturn. And that's a pretty rough day. It can be a really good day. But I will just say this is like kind of a loner day where we want to spend more time by ourselves. And, you know, we, we want a more serious attitude. 
doesn't have to be a bad thing, but for some that are not conscious of this and kind of get stuck in their feelings or aren't conscious of life and don't really like take a proactive approach, these can be very depressing ass days with the moon afflicted by Saturn. And sometimes people think that they don't have anybody who loves them or there's nobody with them. And then a lot of people at the same time are just busy as fuck. So it kind of exacerbates that feeling too. So I just will encourage everybody like love the fuck out of yourself hard this week and know who your support is as well every day for real. And then, you know, next Tuesday, we'll talk about it later. And we got even more freaky ass aspects. And at that point, the sun will get closer to the Mars square. And so will Mercury. So uh, we'll talk about that later. And I love you guys. Do you want to hear the list? Do you really want me to read it? Say you swear. <laughs> I'm going to post this video, y'all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it because I've been like turnt and I got to go do some magic, y'all. We got to get our spells in. we got to do some crazy shit. We got to manifest. We got to get our blessings on. It's the first of the month. So set your goals. New moon as well. Set your goals. Bring in prosperity. Invoke the good shit. Banish the bad shit. And have a good time. Peace. Blessed be. Visualize the world in peace. How does it feel? It feels good. I'll see y'all next time on episode 70. Oh my goodness. Oh my damn. Oh my goodness, he went ham. <laughs>